we were just looking at examples of potential energy. And I told you that that has to do with some sort of storing of energy. Now we talked about gravitational potential energy, and then we can use this equation, EP equals MGH, where you know these things are known values. But what I wanted to point out, though, is that this, I mean, is, is this the only type of potential energy? No way. This is only for gravitational potential energy. Just to let you know, there's a lot more to the whole story here. Okay, so there's other forms. Maybe I'll write that down. So other forms of potential energy. Because it's not just gravitational there's not just uh, stored energy because you're a certain height. Keep in mind this one right here, the way it works, it's because you are at a certain height above the center of the Earth, it turns out. So because of that, you have a gravitational potential energy. Or you could say, you know, if you raise something a certain height, you know, above uh, the center of the Earth, so to speak. So if you raise it from one certain height, let's say this is the Earth right here. So let's say you raise it from one certain height to another certain height. You know, you've, you've done some sort of difference here. You know, you've raised some sort of delta H here. Um, you know, this is all because of the Earth. But there's a lot of other examples. It turns out um, we have things like chemical potential energy. So um, we also have electrical or electric. We also have magnetic. So it turns out these things also are a form of stored energy. We can also say elastic. So in that case, that could be something like... Um, Maybe like a spring. That's a good example of elastic potential energy. Uh, we could even have things like nuclear. Turns out in the nucleus we have potential energy. We have stored energy associated with that. And it turns out there's other ones too. But just, just to try to explain to you, because I think a lot of people, when they're learning about potential energy, at least when they first start, they think that, oh, potential energy, that's just MGH. I want to say, no, that's only for gravitational potential energy. That's MGH. Turns out there's different equations for all of these things. Okay, so this is the equation I've just been showing you here. That's only part of the story. There is a lot more to it than just that. So let's maybe take a look at an example for uh, potential energy. So let's say you're on a ski lift, because I really like skiing. So let's say you're, um, you're off on some sort of ski trip. So that means you have a mountain. Uh, maybe this right here is the mountain, like this right here. So this is the mountain. And it is lots of snow out there. And then you have this sort of lift here. So in other words, you have this you know, device here that can actually raise you, you know, from the bottom to the top of the mountain. So, you know, you've got these little chairs here. And on the little chairs, well, you sit there, you know, with your skis on your feet. Because if you like to do this, it depends where you live. Obviously, if you live in a warm place, maybe you can't have this. Well, unless you're in somewhere like, uh, I don't know, Dubai, maybe. There they have indoor ski lifts. But in any case, let's say you're, you know, you're on this uh, chairlift here that lifts you up. Usually it's above the ground, though. And this thing here lifts you up a certain height. So we're told then that we have changed heights here. We've gone from, we've got a change in height. Well, actually, let's, uh, let's look at it like this. So we go from a height of 300 meters that means we start here at 300 meters. That's our height initially, you know, when we first start. That's where we're sitting. And at the end, we're at a height of 2,100 meters. Okay, so you go from here to here. So if your mass is 80 kilograms, how much gravitational potential energy have you gained? So in this case, then, I can write it just like we were talking about before. We can say then that, well, EP, or in this case, I could say change in EP, is equal to m times g times delta h. That's going to be the change in potential energy will be the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height. So in this case then, well it's just really simple, I just have to multiply my mass, which is 80 kilograms, times g, which well we're assuming this is on earth, so it's 9.81 meters per second. I'm going to multiply that by my change in height. So what was my change in height? I need to know delta h. See that? So what I can do then is, I mean, I, I need to calculate this. I need to know what's the change in height. What's the, the height difference that I have? So I can just say, well, it's 2,100, and take that and do minus 300. So in that case, let's see, 2,100 minus 300, that is uh, 1,800. Is that true? Yes. 
So I would say then that that's the number that goes right here. It is 1,800 goes here. Then I would just calculate that answer. So I get out my trusted calculator. Maybe I should clear everything here. So I have 80 times 9.81, because we're assuming this is on Earth, times 1,800. And it turns out then my gain in gravitational potential energy is a very big number. So let's take a look then at how many significant figures I can use. Well, I've got three here, I've got four here, but here I've only got two, you know, two numbers that I should be using. So in this case right here, then I could say, well, that means, oops, just need to get back to my uh, thing right here. So I should use two numbers. So maybe I could say 1.4 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 to the 6. So I'm going to say it's approximately, so my change in potential energy is approximately 1.4 times 10 to the 6 joules. That should be my answer. I say approximately just because I want to use the same number of decimals that uh, you know I started with. So in this case, I could say it's about 1.4 million joules, or I could say 1.4 megajoules, or I could say it's you know one uh, was it one million four hundred twelve thousand six hundred forty. It's all the same thing. It's just a matter of estimating and approximating. But the key thing here, though, is oops, I guess I have to do that. Key thing to realize though is just it just depends on a change in height. So we can deal with gravitational potential energy pretty simply here. So we've just learned about kinetic and potential energy, where kinetic energy was associated with movement, and potential energy that was just associated with uh, stored energy. So in this case, you have stored energy um, if you're at a certain height above the ground. Now we're going to see that we can have some neat things happening with energy. It turns out we can have energy being transferred, and in other words, converted from one form to another. And that's a really nice way to look at how to link these two together, kinetic and potential. So we can do videos later on the, about uh, conservation of energy, and we're actually going to use these properties, that kinetic and potential energy.